afternoon, Internet. Eric Arnold here on Friday, the 27th of March, right about 20 after 4. Oh, what do we have for you here this afternoon? Um, generally, um, I try to talk about sports, but, well, if you've, unless you've been under a rock, there are no sports, so it's hard to find anything to talk about of any value or whatnot. I was going to comb my hair. I, I, did I, do I look okay? I'm sure I look fine. But you can't polish the turd, right? So what does it matter? Um, this is probably going to be like a Donald Trump rally, just completely disjointed and uh, herky-jerky because I just have a bunch of very poorly formed thoughts in my head and I have no real order or uh, I just could not Stood out, uh, stared out the barn here for the past 10 15 minutes, just staring off into space. And uh, and after I did that, the thoughts were no more organized than when I started. So, you'll the, the whatever comes out comes out, I guess. I saw Major League Baseball is like kicking ideas around. I guess basically the players and the owners, I guess, have agreed that. To agree. In other words, look, whatever, we're down for whatever. You know, whatever we think we can hook up here, then we're going to try to hook it up. Like the problem is that uh, there's just so many unknowns at the moment that they can't begin to hook anything up. I mean, uh, you know, here in Pennsylvania, um, you know, we're all, you know, we, I, I think the majority of us are thinking, all right, sooner or later, they're going to let us loose. Uh, the president was kicking around the Easter, April 12th. Oh boy, oh boy. Well, I mean, they just threw my county under the most restrictive lockdown that there is. And we don't have anybody dead. No one's dead in this county. Uh, we barely got any cases. Uh, but nope, we're under the most restrictive lockdown there is. So, you know, I think to myself, April, April 12th, here we go. Turn it loose. And they, all they keep doing is just placing more and more restrictions on us. So, I don't really see any light at the end of the tunnel here at all. Uh, you know, I'm telling myself that these guys are talking to each other. These guys mean in the president and the governors. And that when the president does come out and say, all right, I think we're lifting restrictions now. And we think it's, you know, whatever passes for safe to go outside and resume normal activity, that the governors don't turn right around and go, oh, not in our state you don't, because that's going to lead to real trouble. Uh, so I, I really hope these guys are on the same page, even though they hate each other. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with the president. You can't just leave us locked in our homes forever. Uh, at some point, you got to let us loose, let us go do what we want to do. So, I'm on team government, but I don't know for how much longer. Um, sure, let's do all those things like social spacing and everything like that. That's one of the things I saw in the, the baseball considerations were, <clears throat> excuse me, they were talking about maybe starting the season in areas where the virus isn't active, which I guess would be the Midwest, uh, the South maybe, areas of the South perhaps, uh, especially if they think this thing's temperature sensitive, which I think it is. So they would hold the start the season there and then the, uh, I guess open it later in the Northern cities uh, where perhaps like New York, I mean, may never, the Yankees might just have to play the Mets. They might just have to play their game somewhere else. But all this precludes that they're thinking about fans being in the stands. Man, the way, like, Pennsylvania governor's acting here, I just don't know that they're going to let you do that. I really don't think they're going to let you do that. Uh, uh, they're, they're, that is one they're just going to cross their... And it makes no sense at all. It's like, whenever you turn loose society to go do what we want to do, there are going to be crowds. It's going to happen. There's no way to prevent it. Uh, what if I want to get on a public bus or a public subway? Uh, there are crowds, people. 
They don't line up six feet apart to get on the subway. They push together, they have to, to get on the damn thing before the doors close and it leaves. I mean, I guess you could just, you know, I guess if uh, uh, that was the most important thing, I guess you could just slow the schedule down and uh, spend twice as much time at each stop uh, making sure that one person, now one person, now one person gets on rather than three people getting on at once because that would violate the, the, the spacing regulations. Uh, wh what about school? Are you going to now take out half the seats in your classroom uh, and have five to ten kids per class to make sure that you're uh, 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 in accordance with the spacing regulations? I don't pay enough taxes to afford that, so I would say no. But uh, if, you know, I, I'm not sure this is all being thought about. I mean, it, 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 that's what makes me nervous. Uh, uh, this idea that we'll just enforce these spacing regulations. Uh, you, you're asking for real trouble. Um, and, and honestly, the virus, the numbers of death that it, this virus is generating. Uh, you're going to have to show me more than what you got to impress upon me these draconian measures you're talking about. Um, you're talking about the Great Depression times, too, if you enforce these kind of spacing measures. You really are. Uh, you'll bankrupt the restaurant industry, the bar industry, um, casinos, all these places. They're not designed ball. That's a sports industry. How on earth are you going to have a, a spacing regulation at the ball game? Even if you take the seats and say, okay, we're going to seat these fans, every other seat. Well, what happens when the game's over or when the game is starting? Everybody comes in at one time. Everybody leaves at one time. I guess you'd have to just hire, you know, a thousand more guards just to enforce the spacing regulations just to make sure everybody stays six feet apart. Uh, it, and the hell of it is this virus is temporary. This thing is not going to be here forever. It's just not. Viruses come, viruses go. I mean, the 1918 virus isn't still here. Uh, that burned through society and then it disappeared. So, it, it, you know, all things that I wish would be considered a little more, and I'm not sure there are at the moment. Um... At any rate, I had another point. Oh, here's another thought I had about the uh, MLB. Probably the most important thing those guys should be thinking about, rather than fans in the stands, is what are you guys, if you turn it back on and you say, we're going to play games, what are you going to do when somebody gets sick? What are you going to do when somebody gets sick and tests positive for the virus? Because it's going to happen. Without a doubt, mathematic certainty, that is going to happen. You cannot... You know, let's let's take, oh, I don't know what, there's 25 uh, uh, members of a baseball team, let's make it 40, and then you got 30-some teams, you know, that's 1,200 people, then all the support personnel, upwards of 2,000 people, 2,500 maybe. You can't take 2,500 people and put them in a hermetically sealed jar. These people are going to have contact with the outside world in some fashion. Family members, uh, um, they're going to be just times they get outside the little world of MLB and, and somebody's going to run into somebody that's got this thing, this dad damn disease is just way too communicable. So someone's going to get it. So if their answer is, well, we have to shut it all down then, well, then there's no point in starting it. Uh, you know, the correct answer is we're going to quarantine them. We're going to quarantine you know, that's basically it. You test the people around them then, and anyone that's positive gets stuck in the box for however long, 14 days or more. But you're not going to shut it all down. You're not going to quarantine whole teams uh, out of abundance of caution. At some point, you just have to turn it loose. Um, so, I don't know. These are my thoughts today on Friday. I'm getting frustrated here being uh, locked away in my hermetically sealed jar and uh, I 
suppose everybody is. Uh, oh, I'm not. I'm not violating protocol. I'm not violating norms. I'm doing my social distancing, and I don't run around. And I don't even know what I could do to violate it. Really, I mean, uh, I guess. I'm so far out of goddamn shape. If I wanted to go play in a pickup basketball game, I don't think I could execute it. Uh, certainly wouldn't be very good. So I don't know who would pick me. Um, I really don't know what I could do to violate protocol if I wanted to. I mean, that'll be my project for the next video. I'll try to think of some way I could break the law and get in trouble. And then I'll decide whether to do it or not. Um, but, you know, at the moment, um, I'm existing. Here we are. We all are. So good luck to anybody that gets this virus. You'll probably survive. And uh, but I mean, I'm almost envious. Then they've got it. They, they and they're done with it. They're done with it. Then they can just go about their lives. So it, 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 at any rate, all right. That's all I got for you. I'm sure subscriber X will be unsatisfied, but I think I kept this around 10, 15 minutes, so he'll be happy with that. I'm sure the content will annoy. But whatever. I'll talk to you later. Eric Arnold out.